We'll be talking, of course, about the potential for race war uh, which exists in this country and more particularly in the United States of America. And I'm here to caution against such a race war because race is actually an entirely manufactured concept. Uh, the DNA of a black man and a white man are entirely, entirely identical. In fact, a lot of white men, me included, when we go on holiday, we lie out on a sun lounger trying to become a bit darker, a bit more like them. It is one of the most absurd elements of false consciousness uh, that people can be so easily turned against each other on the basis of color. There are many others, but color is the one we're fixated on this weekend after the shocking scenes in London. And I'm no longer shocked by the scenes I'm watching uh, from the United States. But for worldwide viewers and listeners, what happened yesterday uh, was a group of people calling themselves patriots, although a disturbingly high number of them were giving Adolf Hitler salutes. Confused? They are absolutely confused. And that's one of the issues that the rest of us have to face. A substantial section of the British working class through this false consciousness continually operated on by a malignant, cancerous, so-called mass media have been twisted into imagining that Abdul, who runs the news agent on the corner, or Leroy, uh, who teaches your kid football uh, uh, in the gym hall, are somehow the enemy. When in fact, we all have the same enemies. In fact, even in the time of slavery, we all had the same enemies. The British working class didn't enslave anybody. They were themselves the wage slaves of the slavers. The slavers treated the slaves much worse, of course, and they were literally owned property, but the lives of the wage slaves in the 18th and 19th century and indeed in a very considerable part of the 20th century, were not all that far removed uh, from the economic and social position of the colonized peoples around the world. And so, as a lifelong anti-imperialist and the child and grandchild of lifelong anti-imperialists, I am not guilty of colonialism or of slavery. And that goes for the vast majority of white people in this country, and for that matter, in the United States. Am I against, therefore, Black Lives Matter? Absolutely not. I'm 100% in support of it. As I pointed out in another broadcast earlier this week, if your wife asks you if you love her, it's not the right time to say, I love everybody. If your colleague tells you their father died, it's not the right thing to say, well, everybody's father dies. It might be true, but it isn't the right thing to say. It's called empathy. You have to empathize with a section of the human population who are the descendants of people who are dragged in chains from their own countries deposited in those chains in another if they were lucky enough to get across the ocean without dying and being tossed in the drink like Edward Colston's statue deservedly was in Bristol just the other weekend. But if Black Lives Matter was going to change anything, then Nike and Mercedes and corporate capitalism and high net worth individuals would not be giving them millions of pounds. This is an obvious point which too many have missed. Now, they're doing that because they want to encourage, let's be charitable to them, behavioral change amongst uh, the white population and its state and local security apparatus. Uh, that's 
entirely praiseworthy. That is entirely a demand that we must all associate with, particularly in the United States, but not exclusively in the United States. It seems that many of our police officers are not just unfit for the job in that they've eaten too many donuts, and a remarkable number of them appear to have done that, but unfit because of their racial and political attitudes to their jobs. And many thousands, many, many thousands of dead people, mainly people of color, are in the ground as testimony to that. So I support behavioral change, but it's not enough. Because if you don't change the actual political and economic system in which we live, then all that will be is a trifle more polite and probably only on the surface towards each other. A good thing, necessary, but not remotely sufficient. And that point I made, I'm going to restate. If Black Lives Matter was going to change anything systematic in our society, corporate capitalism would not be right now burning the midnight oil, trying to absorb it and co-opt it. It follows, therefore, uh, if fundamental change is necessary, that many of the activities now being pursued with extraordinary vigor are at best a blind alley and at worst likely to deepen the chasm uh, that exists in many parts of Britain uh, based on ethnic origin, based on color and based on creed. It's the responsibility of all of us to try and unite and fight against the system which oppresses all of us and will go on doing so even if everybody suddenly becomes really polite, mannerly, gentlemanly uh, towards everybody else. We need to focus on a change that matters, change that matters. That's what I have been fighting for all of my life. Now, Peter Hitchens, an authority on many things and a widely read columnist in Britain's biggest newspaper and a man of high standards, uh, not just literary high standards, but standards of behavior, a man I respect, although fundamentally disagree with, opined at great length today in his blog that the left has taken over Britain and that the country is lost to the left. He thinks the left control the BBC. He thinks the left control the mass media. He thinks the left control the civil service. He thinks the left control the police. He thinks the left are in charge of everything. Uh, but that's because of how he defines the left. If instead of the left, he had said liberals, small l, liberals are in control of Britain, he would have had a point. And that is one of the reasons for the mass alienation that we see in our country, in the United States today. You see, I want a culture change. I want a cultural revolution. But I ain't no liberal, bruv. I believe in things uh, that Peter Hitchens believes in and that many of you watching and listening uh, may not. I believe in patriotism. I believe in order, in discipline, in family, not just one's own children uh, for whom we have a lifelong responsibility, uh, but for one's parents who should be living with us and we must demand state policy on the tax system that allows our parents 
are to be living with us and not farmed out to a granny farm somewhere, only to perish because of the grotesque incompetence of our government and the greed for profit of some of those who own and operate those granny farms. I believe in defense. I believe in having an armed uh, force to protect us. I just don't think we need an armed force to go around attacking other people. I believe in having a police force. You'll never catch me demanding that we defund the police. And it is true uh, that the liberal nostrum of individualism has spread throughout our country to the extent that it is the prevailing orthodoxy. Well, I am not an individualist. I'm not a liberal and I'm not a libertarian. And to an extraordinary extent, these two apparently disparate currents of thought actually have conflated around the coronavirus issue and other issues too. I believe in us and always, not just me and now, us and always, us together in the best and most practic practicable unit that we can construct, a unit that we can democratically control, a unit that can democratically take charge of our own destiny, independent, not a slave to anyone else, not following the diktat of anyone else. That's the culture change that I want to see in this country. And if we'd had it, the factories wouldn't have closed. The mines would not have closed. The workshops, the shipyards would not have closed. And working class life in this country would not be the hell it is for millions and millions of working class people. And if that were so, they would not be out on the streets looking for Muslims to attack, black people to attack, people that look or act different to them to attack. That's going to be a big theme of this evening. 